What is happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Tonight, we're getting jiggy with it. Yes, we are back to the hook, rod, line, relationship. And tonight, we're talking about finesse jigs. Yeah, the word finesse jig can mean a lot of different things to different people. Are you talking about a little tiny hook? Are you talking about a regular jig just downsized? Well, I'm going to cover all that. And I really break it down into three categories when I'm talking about finesse jigs. I know there are hundreds of different jigs on the market. I can't cover them all. But especially for you beginners out there, if you break it down into three simple groups, you'll be a lot better suited to pair one of these with one of your combos. Remember, the point of this series is not for beginners to go out and have to buy a different combo for every different lure that we cover. It's about using your combos effectively whether that's changing the hook size, changing the line diameter, going down to a lighter line, whatever it is to use what you have. Or on the opposite side, if you've already got some combos, but you're looking to get something new, you know, I want to get something specifically for finesse jigs, we'll cover that too. Speaking of these little finesse jigs, let's take a closer look. Starting with these little tiny mini finesse jigs. Now these guys are my first category jigs, these little tiny finesse wire hooks. And that's key, finesse wire hooks. The word finesse jig can be used for any of these guys, but I tell you, this finesse hook, you compare that to a big flipping jig, that really puts it in perspective. The first category of these little finesse jigs are these. Now this little guy happens to be a Z-Man Micro Finesse Shroom Head Jig. This is a little 1 8 ounce jig, and I love these things. Man, with it being cold out now, with it being winter, a little finesse jig like this with not much action on the back, this is actually one of my Grande Bass Airtails. Clip that off and put that on back. This guy sits on the bottom and just does a little shake like this. Killer for this cold water. You want to match your jig trailer to these little jigs. When I'm fishing a little finesse jig like this in cold water, I want a trailer with not much action. But again, the key to this first category is those little tiny light wire finesse hooks. So that's the first category of the finesse jigs. Now moving up, we bring in something that's a little bit closer to a normal jig. Now you'll see here the hook on this one compared to this little guy, a little bit different. See the difference there? This is a little tiny finesse jig hook. This is more of that standard wire, so we're stepping up, but still not into something like this. Those big flipping hooks, still nowhere close to that. So this is a good little step up, but still a good finesse presentation. Now you can change up the presentation. I just have a little three inch uh, beaver bait here. So when you start getting into these jigs, this is really more of the finesse jig when I think of one. It's downsized from a normal jig, a little bit smaller compact profile. You can see there that the front of the skirt's trimmed. This guy's not very long. Still a pretty small, compact little jig. But the key is that hook. That hook is stepped up. You can see I can still bend this with my finger so it's not real heavy wire, but I'm stepping up a big upgrade over something like this. A little itsy bitsy tiny hook, more like a Ned Rig hook, moving up to something like this. Now when you start moving up to something like this, you can fish this on a bait caster. That's what I like about moving into these. I can throw this on one of my medium power bait casters, which we'll talk about more. But I can throw this on there and fish this on my bait caster instead of something like this that I'm fishing on a spinning tackle. Well, we'll talk about that. So that's the second type of jig. I can fish these around more different types of cover. You know, I've got a little bit stouter hook to hold onto those fish in case they run under a dock or run into some brush. A more standard wire finesse jig. So that's the second category. So we've got the first little tiny micro category, second category. Now moving up from those, this is really just a standard jig but it's finesse in its presentation. You'll notice that the skirt's a little bit shorter, the front skirt has been trimmed off, the weed guard's not as long, the hook's a little bit shorter, but it's still a good stout, it can barely bend that hook, a good stout hook. You compare that to something like this, and it's still finesse. You look at the difference there, this is a much bigger, meatier presentation. You can still see that this is a much bigger, thicker hook. I believe this is a five out hook, five out hook compared to this little guy, probably a two or three out hook. So you can see the difference here when you compare these two. This is a bigger flipping, you know, jig compared to this little guy, this little finesse jig. Happen to have a little homemade trailer on there. Oh yeah. That's just really one of these uh, zoom chunks that I've actually trimmed down, put some little notches in it to make it look like claws. But in the cold weather like now, you don't again want that trailer that's gonna do a bunch of stuff. So these guys just kind of sit back there and flutter as opposed to something like this, you throw this in the water, this is gonna kick all the way down. These are really aggressive in cold water like that, you don't want it. Now, if you were fishing a finesse jig like this in the summer, you could still downsize your profile, chomp this normal Strike King Rage tail off, and do something like that. You could still get the same, you know, see effect. You'd have a little bit more compact presentation. And that's this third style of jig, a standard finesse jig, that standard wire hook, just downsized over the normal type of jig. I call these the gateway jigs. If you're somebody that does not like to fish jigs, something like this, throwing that on would completely intimidate you. 
go to these little guys. These things are perfect. You will draw all kinds of bites, one pounders, three pounders, five pounders. This thing will catch a ride variety of fish. This happens to be the War Eagle Heavy Finesse Jig. My buddy Randizzle got me turned on to these. Great little jigs, great, you know, fishing rocks, those rocky, you know, fishing pier drop-offs. Draw all kinds of bites with a little guy like this. You could fish these in the summer and throw something like this on it. You know, your twin tail grubs, perfect for summer. Or just something like this. I like to fish these on it most of the time, a little three inch beaver. Throw it on the back of here without making any modifications. And this is a killer, killer summer bite when it's a little bit tougher. Throw something like that and I guarantee you can switch your day around pretty quick when you find those fish. And just to put this into perspective, look at that. That little guy compared to this. So you can see, if I told a beginner to go out and grab a finesse jig, they're awesome for you know cold weather or when a bite's tough in the summer, you can see how it can be confusing for a beginner because they could pick any one of these. These are all finesse jigs, just different types. So enough of the wires and hooks and all this stuff. What do we fish them on? Now let's talk about the combos. Now when we start with these little guys, these little tiny finesse wire jigs, remember finesse wire is key. I want to use a lighter combo. I go with the medium light or a medium power spinning rod. Seven foot's my preferred length of choice, but use what's comfortable for you. I go with a 2,000 or 3,000 size spinning reel, whichever you prefer, either one will work well. The important part is that you have a good smooth drag on it, especially for these lighter lines. Speaking about line, I go with a 15 or 20 pound braid to a fluorocarbon leader. Eight pound is my leader of choice. And this setup has been killer for these little type of jigs. This is essentially my Ned Rig rod and reel. Same thing, a little tiny finesse wire hook with just a skirt and a little trailer on it. It's essentially a dressed up Ned Rig. The spinning rod and reel combo is just a whole lot more accessible for people because I know people out there are gonna say, we could use a BFS bait caster or a bait finesse system bait caster. And those are bait casters made to throw little tiny lures like this, but not everybody has access to those. You can find a good spinning rod and reel combo about anywhere, and chances are you've probably already got one in your arsenal anyway. The key to the spinning rod with these little tiny finesse wire hooks is a couple things. One, the rods tend to be a little bit softer than something in like a bait caster, you know, medium power. This is gonna be a softer combo than that. And that's important because with these little itsy bitsy tiny wire hooks, you don't wanna bend those out or rip them out of the fish's mouth. So with a softer rod and a reel that you can use the drag on, you know, something you're already used to, fishing a, a shaky head or a Ned Rig, you're used to using the drag on that. To me, this is great for a beginner to fish these small jigs. I just would not go up to a medium heavy spinning combo. It's gonna be a little bit too heavy and stiff for a little tiny wire jig like that, in my opinion. If you've got one, try it out, it might work for you, but I'd go with medium or medium light. Next up, I've got a couple different combos for these kind of middle of the road little jigs where we're stepping up in the wire size, but we're still not up to that normal standard wire jig. For these mid-range jigs, I am moving up to a medium power bait caster combo. This one probably looks very familiar. This is the one I talked about with those lipless and jerk baits. That's exactly what this is. I've thrown the Nico rig on this, Neko rig on this, whatever you call it. I throw lighter little finesse lures on this. A medium power rod, usually something rated up into the five eighths of an ounce or three quarter of an ounce rating on it, is perfect for these little middle of the road jigs. Put on the reel of your choice. This happens to be that SLX again, 7.2 speed. Whatever reel you wanna put on there, remember you're moving the bait with your rod, not the reel. So whatever you're comfortable with. When it comes to line, I like a 12 pound line for these. I know that might sound kind of sketch and if you're fishing docks and stuff and if you can get away with it, you might move up to a 15 pound line, but remember these are smaller, lighter lures. That 12 pound line, or even if you're feeling risky, dropping down to a 10 pound fluorocarbon will make all the difference when you're fishing those little lures. Castability, workability, you're not having a real stiff line interfering with that jig. So this is just a great example to show you that you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of different combos for all these lures. Again, this is my lipless jerkbait rod. You can also throw little smaller finesse jigs, shaky heads, that kind of stuff. Now in comparison, I've got another combo that I was using for these. This happens to be my Speed Demon rod. This is the seven foot three jig and worm. This is still a medium power rod rated for lures up to three quarter of an ounce. But as you can see, I happen to be fishing a little shaky head on it. Same thing, that is not a really strong wire hook. And in fact, if I take it off and show you here, you can see this, look how easily it is for me to bend that. Yeah, yeah, a little bend in there. Not a thick wire hook. You don't want a real big, strong, heavy, powerful rod with those little wire hooks because you're just gonna bend them out. So something in this range, five eighths to three quarter, I found a medium power rod to be really good for these middle of the road jigs. Last but not least, those standard wire finesse jigs. This is really just a normal jig with the front cut off again, downsized trailer, giving a nice little small compact presentation 
but it's still a good stout thick hook. So for these standard wire finesse jigs, I'm throwing it on probably one of the most common combos you will find out there. This happens to be a seven foot two medium heavy rod rated for lures up to one ounce. If you check out your medium heavy, there's a very good chance that it's rated for lures to one ounce. That's a very popular rating. Now, again, remember, not all companies' rods are gonna be the same, so you might wanna test it out. If you have a few different medium heavy rods, one's a little bit softer than the others, I would go with that softer one for these little bit tinier wire hooks. This is just a little bit smaller than something like a real big thick flipping hook, but it's still a hook that you're not gonna bend out very easily at all. Again, slap your favorite reel on here, now you'll notice what well, Debo I didn't know you like to use braid I don't generally I'm gonna go with a 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon 100% when I'm fishing a jig like this but I wanted to test out something more this year is going from a braid to a fluorocarbon leader something I don't really do on my casting rods but I wanted to test it out more so again that's another good segue for you guys out there that like to throw only braid if you find you need to get a little bit more finesse in your presentation try switching over to a fluorocarbon leader a little bit harder to see if you're in clear water or the fish are really getting a good look at that lure just might make the difference i think it does some people will argue with me out there and i'm fine with that that's what makes the fishing community fun but i honestly do think that if you switch to a little bit clearer uh, line presentation when those fish are really looking at it you will get more bites now if you happen to have one of those medium heavy combos where it's pretty stiff you think oh, i don't i don't know about that you could always go over to a copolymer as well so that's what i mean be versatile in your setups if you got a whole bunch of these jigs and you only have one rod you can change from braid to that copolymer line that's got a little bit more stretch and completely change the outcome of the day if you notice that you're running braid you're running a jig just like this and every time you get the fish in it's got a big hole ripped in it or you're losing fish a lot chances are you've just got too heavy too stiff of a setup with line that's not giving. You can fish that exact same rod and reel combo, switch over to that copolymer, and I tell you, it can change a day completely. So remember, you don't have to go out and buy a new combo for every one of these little presentations that we talk about. Use what you have and be versatile. So that does it for the hook rod line relationship for these little tiny finesse jigs. Of course, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. I love talking to all you fishing friends out there. Very, very appreciative of the support I get from everyone. So it's the least I can do is answer your questions. Also, feel free to let me know what lure you'd like to see down there next. I'm going to be covering a bunch of these this winter because I'm stuck in the Debo dungeon talking about fishing by myself to a camera. Yeah, well, until next time.